Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. Welcome to episode 77 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. I'm Lola Phoenix. Please send your questions to nonmonogamyhelp at gmail.com and either be read in the podcast or the column anonymously. You're more than welcome to decide which one you would prefer. If you want to read the columns and listen to the podcast, you can find them all at nonmonogamyhelp.com. You can subscribe to our email newsletter by going to go.nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash email, which lets you see the podcast and the columns a few days before they go live. And you can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at nonmonogamyhelp. If you'd like to support the columns and the podcast, it would be awesome if you'd consider becoming a patron. Even $1 a month helps support the daily running of the columns and the podcast, and it shows me a general vote of support, which I really appreciate. There are also upper tiers that you can choose if you would prefer to have exclusive VIP bookings of events, things like that. So there's lots of things that you can get by choosing a higher tier if you go to patreon.com forward slash Lola Phoenix. If you donate $5 or more a month, your name with your permission will be read at the end of the podcast. Let's get to this week's discussion question. If this is the first time you're hearing this every week before I read the letter, I like to go through a discussion question that you can use with your friends, partners, or anyone else to get to know them a little bit more. I also answer it myself briefly to give you just a little bit of context. This week's discussion question is, when was the first moment that you recognized that you might be polyamorous or interested in non-monogamy? For me, this is actually quite interesting. I think that it kind of dawned on me as an option a little bit later on. I I had a kind of weird introduction into relationships in that I kind of actively avoided them and avoided any kind of thing like it for a very long time because of recovering from sexual abuse. And I was in a situation where someone that I loved, I, I was deeply, deeply in love with someone, who was in Australia and it was a long distance relationship and it began as a long distance relationship and it was a long distance relationship the entire time and I felt very insecure about it because of the things people would say about like oh you can't possibly be in love with this person you've never met in person and so I was very very secure well I wasn't secure but I was very very sure and I do think that I did love this person and very very unwilling to hear any criticisms of that which is understandable but that in and of itself made me realize like I started to have crushes on other people or started to be interested in other people and because I had this unwavering absolute like not even you know very stubborn feeling of like I am definitely in love with this person no one can tell me anything else I was able to kind of sit back and go, okay, I definitely know I love this person, but I also have, you know, am interested in these other people. And when we actually ended up kind of breaking up, we didn't really have a clean break and that made it more difficult. But when we did break up, basically it was a situation where he was interested in someone else and I was sort of like, well, it's fine. It's okay if you're interested in that person, you can date that person as long as, and I realized like as long as he kept talking to me, as long as we had a relationship I didn't really mind and to be honest with you like that wasn't a great situation there was a lot there that I was sacrificing without him asking me to sacrifice and there were a lot of things that I should have asked for that I didn't but I think that was kind of like my first inclination of like actually do you know what I don't really care if you have feelings for somebody else that doesn't actually bother me very much it made my breakup way harder (laughs) because I didn't really start to feel emotionally upset about him being with someone else until he basically told me that when I, I, I made an unfair demand of him that if he if he came to visit me then he would have to clearly break up with this person and to be with me you know because that's how monogamy functions and understandably he said no I'm not gonna break up with my partner that I'm with to be with you while I'm visiting you and that was when I got really upset so It made my breakup way harder, but it was probably the first situation where I didn't really know non-monogamy was a thing at the time, but it was kind of the first situation where I'm like, oh, actually, I don't, I don't actually mind all that much. 
So yeah, the question is, I'll repeat it, is when was the first moment you sort of recognized that you might be polyamorous or interested in non-monogamy? Let's get to this week's letter. I'm a male and have been dating my fiancé for five and a half years now. We are in a monogamous relationship, but I have done my fair share of cheating as well. We have talked about my cheating and are working through it with each other. I have also been going through lots of therapy to better understand myself. Through this process, I have come to the conclusion that I am non-monogamous and was seeking something more, which I am still working through, that I wasn't getting sexually from my partner. The thing is, I deeply care for her and love her. I am having trouble deciding if it would be best for both of us if we break up or if I am willing or even able to stay faithful in a monogamous relationship with her. I am doing so now fine, but that doesn't mean it won't change in the future. I want to mention as well that I've opened up to her as there being a thought of me not being monogamous and her response coincides with her not being okay with that. I also want to mention that when I was cheating I did experience a decent amount of anxiety doing so and received no satisfaction in the secrecy of it all. In fact, the idea of being more open is a turn on for me. I've mentioned that I wouldn't mind if she was with other people as long as she told me, but she has expressed no interest in doing so. If you have any advice or thoughts on this, I would love to hear it. Before we get to this week's answer, I'm going to quickly plug this episode's sponsor, BetterHelp. Quite often in a lot of my columns and podcasts, I encourage people to seek a polyamory-friendly therapist, and for a lot of people looking locally for a therapist who understands polyamory or is in any way supportive of it might be impossible or just out of their budget. BetterHelp allows you to find therapists online that you can send messages to at any time of the day, and they do offer some financial aid. You can get 10% off your first month by using the promo code NonMonogamyHelp at checkout or going to betterhelp.com forward slash NonMonogamyHelp. Let's get to this week's answer. Basically, I think that it is better for you to break up. And I say that for two reasons. So I don't necessarily think that cheating means that you're non-monogamous. Because if you, it's, it's hard to say, you say that you are, you are not getting, you want more than you're getting sexually from your partner. So I don't know if that means that the, you're not, you have an expectation that you will always have the same type of libido as your partner, which I don't think is a realistic expectation. I don't know if that means that your partner is unwilling to try things that you want to try. I don't know if that means that your partner is not interested in the same things. Like you could be interested in monogamy and be monogamous and just, you know, not be sexually compatible with this person. Or you could be non-monogamous and for you, part of the appeal of being non-monogamous is the sexual variety that you can have with other partners. So either way, it doesn't necessarily bode well for this relationship. I would be more interested to see how, if that's changed in five years, because I do really, really think that there are some times when I see people who are super interested in non-monogamy or they, they sort of have this false expectation of the way that monogamous relationships should be. So they're very influenced by the idea that things should always be dramatic, that the new relationship energy that you feel with someone when you're, when you're new to each other should continue, like, because you've been together for five years. And it is quite normal in a monogamous relationship, and I don't think that it's abnormal in polyamorous relationships either, for you to have a kind of big burst at the beginning and to be kind of in that honeymoon phase, and then for things to lull a bit or kind of have an up and down. That is pretty normal. I do think that it's it's not a bad thing for people to want to have non-monogamy because they can then meet new people, have that new relationship energy, and then it's not such a big deal if that relationship ends or they decide to go see someone else new like they can kind of have that continuous supply of new and exciting bubbly thing I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing but I do think that sometimes people just put a little bit of an unrealistic expectation especially if you're with someone for a long time especially if you live together it is quite normal even if you are polyamorous I think it is quite normal for there to be lulls and peaks and troughs in libidos, peaks and troughs and, and 
and sexual experience and I also think that you have to put effort into it and I think that that is another thing that people kind of unrealistically expect in monogamy is that sex is just gonna just happen and be you know always fun and spontaneous and and that you don't have to put any effort into it and that you should both just effortlessly just be into each other all the time because that is kind of how it is when it starts out you kind of are that way because you're in an exciting honeymoon phase it is something that you have to work on and so I think that if you are having this expectation in your relationship that it should always be exciting and fun and new da, 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 and it's not and so you're seeking more exciting and fun and newness I don't necessarily know is that non-monogamy is going to always cure that because you may you know end up just kind of bouncing around and being that comet partner as it's called for some people where you come into their lives and then you leave but that is what that is <laughs> and if you have that expectation and understand your needs and you understand you like that new relationship energy and you don't mind that then that is one thing but if you are deciding that this specific relationship isn't for you because it's changed or because you don't have the same libidos which isn't going to necessarily be any truer for you if you're polyamorous then that might become still a problem for you in polyamory so it, it it's worth thinking about what your expectations are are your expectations of this relationship you know that you expect sex to just happen spontaneously and for there to be no, no effort put into it what kind of efforts have you put because like the cheating thing is is rough and that's difficult that kind of creates a boundary well not a boundary that creates a barrier rather between you and your partner and erodes trust and makes it harder to for them to want to sleep with you so is that kind of part of the problem here so how much have you unpacked about that how much have you thought about that what reasons do you have for you know seeking other other is it about the variety of sexual experiences are you interested in that aspect you know because the thing that i always kind of say and that i think people make this mistake a lot polyamory isn't necessarily about finding multiple unfulfill unfulfilling relationships until you reach a level of permissible stasis so you're not trying to basically go okay well this relationship is kind of works this kind of works and i'll put together and form like a franken relationship that's not necessarily what it's supposed to be about like you shouldn't stay with people who aren't fulfilling and that's not to say that one person should necessarily be completely and utterly perfect for you or anything like that but that doesn't also mean that you stay in a relationship that doesn't work so yeah it's complicated I do kind of wonder though and the reason why I said break up initially is that if you are not if you're not sexually compatible with each other then that is that is an issue and would be an issue regardless and even if you were to you know be able to be non-monogamous and not cheat that isn't going to take away from the fact that you don't feel like this is working for you and it's not selfish or a bad thing to want to have sexual fulfillment in a relationship it's just about what it is behind that because the thing of it is is that you could break up with her you could go into a, a polyamorous relationship with somebody maybe end up living with them and if your expectation about how sex works in a long-term relationship is that it's always going to be fun new and exciting and bubbly you're probably going to find that same sort of lull in a polyamorous relationship. Being polyamorous doesn't inherently mean you have a higher libido. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're interested in more things. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are more adventurous. It sometimes that coincides just because polyamory obviously isn't considered by most cultures to be a automatic choice or something that people even consider without going through other communities like the sex positive community but it doesn't mean inherently that someone is necessarily more sexually adventurous like there are lots of ace, ace polyamory people i am somewhat on the ace spectrum i don't necessarily enjoy dating i don't necessarily have any interest in huge sexual variety that that's not at all what i'm interested in so yeah i think you're probably sexually incompatible and my initial instinct is to not force yourself into monogamy it, and it is to kind of think about breaking up or thinking about separating especially since she's very very clear that she does not want to try it and that's 
fine. She's allowed to have that. She's allowed to feel that way, and I do not think you should convince her. But I think it's worth having a little bit of self-examination, if you haven't already, about what your expectations are. What is it about the variety that is interesting? Is it the new relationship energy? Is it the excitingness, the bubbliness? Because if you go into polyamory with that expectation, still, I think you're still going to have problems. And I mean, luckily in polyamory, you will be able to sleep with other people, you know, as long as it's informed. But you're still going to have that problem if you expect everything to kind of be explosive, if that makes sense. So yeah, I hope that helps and good luck. Thank you for listening to episode 77 of Nominogamy Help. If you want to be awesome, you can donate to Patreon or become a patron. Donating $5 or more a month means your name, with your permission, will be read at the end of the podcast. This week's current patrons are Laura Boylan, Chris Albury Jones, Juke Ellen Robinson, Nikki Jones, James Wartell, and Leo Yaki. If for whatever reason you can't become a patron, because I totally understand, life happens. If you can take five minutes to log into iTunes, find the podcast rate and review it, that would be super helpful. It helps me get the podcast out there to new people. And if you don't want to write a review and you just want to do a rating, that's still appreciated. So if you have five minutes to spare, please do that if you can. That's all for this week. You'll get a new column next Friday and another podcast episode in a fortnight. Thank you again for listening. You've been listening to Nominogamy Help. Our podcast music has been provided by Chris Albury Jones at albury-jones.com and the art was made by Dom Yum at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you for listening.